What is up guys? Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Burnham or Nostalgic One here on the internet and this is WizRogue Labyrinth of Wizardry here on the Dungeon Crawler Report, the show where I look at uh, dungeon crawlers new and old and similar kinds of games and tell you what I think about them. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Uh, since It's been since July last year. It's almost a year now. Feels like it's almost a year. Uh, I know it's been a while. I haven't really done any YouTube or Twitch stuff. Um, really since, like, beginning of fall last year. I don't know, I just, I kind of got, like, diminishing returns on this, uh, video and streaming type stuff, and, uh, I know a lot of you guys that are creators kind of feel the same way sometimes, um, and, uh, good on you for sticking with it, those of you that keep going, even though you don't get a lot of views or a lot of comments or subscribers or whatever, I think that's really cool. Uh, that you still put up content. But anyway, all of that aside, yeah, this is WizRogue, and this is published by Taito, as you can see, and uh, it was made for the Japanese mobile market. It came out in 2014. That's why it says the 2014 copyright here. Um, but it's been put out on Steam by a Polish company. I read that they're Polish online. I don't know. Um, called Forever Entertainment SA. I don't know what the SA stands for. <laughs> And it's coming out on February 24th of 2017, this year. And they were gracious of, enough to give me a beta code. Uh, I just tweeted about this game. I thought it looked interesting. Um, some, every once in a while, I'll search for like wizardry on Steam to see if anything new pops up. And to my surprise, this popped up. And I looked at it, tweeted about it, and here we are. This is the beta. Um, and I wanted to let you guys listen to that song at the beginning because I think it's pretty cool that they put a, a full, like, fantasy type. It's kind of, it's almost like fantasy prog metal type song in here. I don't know. It's a little generic, but uh, I like the woman's voice here and the horns. And I think it's pretty well done for a little mobile game. I don't know if the song was in the original. I haven't played the original. Uh, so we're just checking this out, but you'll you'll definitely see the mobile influence here. It feels a lot like a mobile game, but I don't think it's a, a bad game, at least so far. Just my initial impression. Um, <laughs> I like how they note the Wizardry Renaissance down here in 2009. I think that was part of uh, the Wizardry MMO <laughs> when when that came out. Man, feels so long ago. It must have been even before that, or maybe like this is when GamePot. Uh, acquired the license. You, some of you guys will know better than I, but I, I know that GamePot Inc. still owns the Wizardry license, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess fortunately for the, uh, for the Japanese audience. But man, it'd be great to get this back in the hands of a Western developer, don't you guys think? Um, fortunately, we've got a lot of dungeon crawlers coming out in the West here now from uh, some of the old and new developers, and uh, small and large and Kickstarters happening and everything and. Man, I could wax poetic about dungeon crawlers all day, but I know you guys want to see this game, so let's get into it. It's nice to record for you guys again, though. It's been so long. And I have a new setup here, uh, sort of. Uh, I think I recorded on my Blue Yeti mic last time, but I have a new keyboard, which is mechanical, and a new mouse. So if you guys notice that anything is too loud or anything is wrong about the audio balance or you're picking up weird things on the audio, please let me know in the comments um, so I can address that for next time, whatever next time is. Uh, all right, so this is the the main hub screen for WizRogue. And uh, I should explain that it's, it's called WizRogue because it's a wizardry game, but it's also a roguelike. So... Uh, if you haven't played a roguelike before, you can expect uh, lots of randomly generated content, uh, probably dungeons and monsters and items. That's what I'm expecting anyway. Uh, there's certainly randomly generated characters. I did not create this party. I was just given it um, right off the bat in the tutorial. And I don't believe that you can actually customize your characters all that much, although you can buy more characters. And uh, this looks pretty good for a mobile game put on PC, uh, the setup is pretty slick, and in general I like the UI. Uh, the font is kind of meh, but I mean on a smaller screen this would be fine. So we have a lot of stuff to check out. Uh, you see I got a login bonus today, uh, which is kind of a mobile hearthstone -y type thing. Um, apparently I got an invitation from somebody. 
And uh, there is kind of an online aspect to this game that I haven't checked out, but you can play with other people if you meet them in, in the dungeon, I guess, or something like that. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to explore that today since we're just in the beta, and I don't expect many people are playing this game right now. Uh, there is a shitload of achievements in this game, as you can see. Um, defeat 50 fighter type monsters, 50 of every type of monster, revitalize yourself 50 times, disarm 20 bombs, acquire 10 adventurers. And you get these pretty quick, I think. There's none, none of these seem too difficult so far. Land 50 critical hits. A lot of these you'll just do over the course of the game if you play regularly. Or at all. <laughs> um... So we can see our fellows, we can search for other people with user IDs. Uh, you can change your user ID at any time, at least you can in the beta. Um, so if, if I do play this game and you want to play with me, uh, I'll, I'll just keep it as nostalgic and you can add me on here. It's a little weird that we have to go into other to see the game settings. I wish that was just a, uh, a button on its own and it wasn't in the other menu, but whatever. Uh, let's look at the credits here for a sec. Oh, this is nice. Overall, the music's kind of generic for this game, but I I think it fits really well. Taito. I'm going to go through everybody that works at Taito. <laughs> it's a lot of people, I'm guessing. Anyway, that's kind of nice. You guys can watch that if you want. Um, but yeah, game settings. Uh, we got a lot of resolutions to choose from, which is nice. Uh, sound, quality, I don't know how much this actually affects the game, I'm just gonna keep it at high and it seems fine. Clear cache, deletes any cache data in your device. Oh, so this is a holdover from the mobile game, I believe. I'm guessing they'll remove this option. Unless you can play this on, like, your tablet or something. I actually don't know if it's on the, um, English App Store or uh, Google Play or anything. Oh, uh, what else is here? The leaderboard. We can look at the daily leaderboard to see um, which people are doing the best. Yeah, there's no no one playing in the best 20. Um, this guy, that's the guy that added me. I, I'm guessing he's one of the devs or something. Um, but I like leaderboards for games like this, for roguelikes especially. It's kind of uh, Spelunky-esque, I guess. Uh, I know I'm taking a while to go through all these menus, but there really is a lot to explore, surprisingly, for, for a mobile game, mostly. Uh, here at the Labyrinth screen, you'll pick which dungeons you want to do. The starter dungeon is a tutorial dungeon. Uh, it's pretty boring and basic, but it gets you through the main mechanics of using items and attacking and stuff. We can look at our party here. We can edit who we have in the party, which is nice. Um, we can change their equipment, we can swap them out for somebody else. I haven't done too much of this so far. I've really only gone through the tutorial, so you guys can learn right along with me. I only have seven people right now. I bought this guy, uh, I believe, with either wizard... This is like wizard jewels, I think, or whiz jewels, uh, which is special currency you get for completing labyrinths, and I'm guessing in the mobile version you can buy this. This is, it seems like a very... Like, like dust and, or like gold and hearthstone, or like, um, the currency that you would buy with real money. Um, you can have several parties, which is pretty cool. Or at least a few. And I like how, real quick, these are all named after, like, the original buildings in Wizardry, like Gilgamesh's Tavern. Uh, I think it was originally called Town Outskirts, too, which is cool. Cameron, I think. I'm not sure if it randomly generates a name for your town or if it, all of them are called Cameron. You guys will have to let me know if you get this. I actually don't know how much it's going to be when it comes out on Steam, um, but I guess we'll know in a couple weeks. Adventurers Guild is the same. This is where you can buy more adventurers, and uh, the more gold you have, the better adventurers you can buy. So, I think, it, yeah, I think I bought um, my Elite with Wiz Jewels or whatever. I don't know what materials are for. Hmm. Cost one adventure ticket or three recruit tickets to acquire an adventure. Need to do some editing here. I like this kind of random generation screen. Rolls the dice for us. Get a total of 17. 
A C score is pretty... I think it's, like, average. I think it's pretty good for just a regular character, not an elite. Um, we don't probably need another fighter, I don't think. I'm not going to try and min-max very much right now, and I haven't seen really a need to, anyway. Um, we can train up people in our party. Here's my elite guy, Gyrus. Um, fortify, get XP, upgrade rarity. Oh, okay, so if you have these common guys, you can upgrade them. That's cool. Needs 44 more levels. You can buy items, Vortac. I think, I don't remember if that was the same. Anyway, let's get into a labyrinth. Uh, and there's tons to choose from, actually. At least in uh, the master list. I'm just going to stick to the normal list and do Sarone's Ruin. Uh, more stars, tough for the labyrinth, better loot awaits. Oh, that's another thing. Like, every time you go to a screen, it has to load, because I'm guessing it has to talk to the server. Which is kind of weird. Uh, not sure why I can't get into this right now. Maybe because I was in it before. Ranking Labyrinth. It'd be cool if you could make your own labyrinths, but I do definitely want to show you guys these. Whatever, let's do a master one. Advanced leaderboard. Okay. And every labyrinth has its own little story. Just, you know, whatever. It's kind of nice. Nice touch. So once a lord infatuated with rare trinkets and gems, the treasury locked away in a nearby labyrinth was the making of many a raider's reputation. Yet one piece remained unclaimed on the lowest floor. Dare you find it. I guess we dare. Uh, first time rewards, we get an adventurer ticket, which is okay. Uh, we have to kill the boss on B3. Difficulty recommended three ranks or above. I guess we'll try it and see what happens. We might get annihilated here. Alright. You met Norba Pal, an adventurer also trespassing this lab traversing this labyrinth. Oh, apparently he's in here too right now. Uh yes. That would be awesome. Thanks, Norba Pal. Bid each other a safe journey before parting ways. I'm guessing he's a dev if he knows that I'm playing, but I don't know. So this is uh, how the main game looks. We have a little mini map. Um, I don't remember what this is, actually. Uh, we can see our goal. We can see the front and back of the party. This is our party right here. We can see the battle log. We can always go to the menu. We can leave the dungeon, and we can pay some gold to not uh, lose everything that we found. Look at the party status. We can even edit the party while we're in here, uh, just with, I'm guessing, the equipment and stuff. Um, we can move the mini-map around, which is kind of weird, but uh, it's really easy to move around. We just move around by clicking. And you either can move into a square, or you can click and hold and choose which direction you want to attack. Uh, I think. Or if you click, sorry, if you move and click on your party, then you attack. And you can choose which way you're facing. I like this conceit because in, like, the actual wizardry, ga wizardry game, like, the entire party is on the same square. But I like just being able to visualize it here because not a lot of games do that. You just kind of have to, like, think about it yourself. And in, and in real life and, like, other kinds of RPGs... Like, the party would never be so so bunched up together, but since we're in a, a mobile game and it's a roguelike, we can kind of do this. And these these really feel like game pieces. They have, they kind of click and clack around, and um, they wobble back and forth, and they don't, they don't move otherwise, but it's a pretty cool idea for a mobile game. That guy was sleeping, so we'll just attack him. We get a chest. It's kind of weird that you can bid farewell to a chest, but whatever. Kalfo, I'm guessing, is the open lock spell from like the original wizardry. Just disarm it. Uh-oh. Triggered it. But we still got a dose of HW. Uh, I'm blanking on what HW is, sorry. I'm sure it was explained in the tutorial, but I think... Oh yeah, this is like our, uh, our move counter. Um, so we can only walk around in the dungeon for a certain amount of time. Timberlake, Disabled Paralysis. And I think you can pay either like gold or whiz jewels to get more of HW. 
So kind of like really basic effects, but you have to think about it being on a smaller screen. And hopefully they'll update some of this stuff, but there's only a couple weeks left. Yikes, Gyrus took a big hit there. Um, items... Just use that. HW restored. So that got our HW back, but we don't have much health. Like I said, we're on a master-type dungeon, so we might get destroyed. Luckily, these guys are all sleeping. I don't think I have any other items right now. Background music's kind of cool. I don't know how much of this game I'm actually going to play for you guys, because it seems like once you've played one Labyrinth, you've played all of them. And you guys can kind of imagine how the dungeons would get harder. Gyrus is taking a shit ton of damage. Okay, goodbye Gyrus. So yeah, this seems rather difficult, although I am only like rank 1, I think. Okay. I don't really have a lot of the, the strategy down. Seems like you collect a lot of these dose of HWs, which is which is good, I guess, if you want to stay in the dungeon, but I'd rather get more valuable items, um, like healing potions and weapons and stuff. I'm sure those are uh, more well guarded. I don't know if the whole party dies, if you have to like buy new adventurers or if you have to revive them. I guess we'll find out if we die stole some gold from us, but I think we got it back. Hopefully. We're only moving one square at a time right now, but you can kind of... Well, I guess we died. You can hold down and move quicker. Revive with 200 uh, Wiz Jewels. We don't have that many. You lose all gold, Wiz Jewels, and the items in your bag that you earned in the Labyrinth, not including purchased Wiz, wiz Jewels. Yes. So yeah, you can buy Wiz Jewels. I don't know how they're going to carry over that Wiz Jewel system into the main game. If they're going to keep it or what, if they're going to let you use real money. I'm guessing they will. <laughs> so even though we died, we leveled up. That's cool. Doesn't make a ton of sense. I mean, in like traditional wizardry, but I guess for this game it does. I'm sure there's a reason why they would do that. It's nice for me. I mean, we got another achievement. So, you only live once. We died once. Uh, go to your inbox to claim it. We got 250 gold. Oh, so each one of those characters that dying counted as a death. Dying counted as a death. Um, cool. I guess we should claim this experience. Material bronze. We got a bunch of gold. That's nice. I'll show you guys like the item buying. Maybe we'll find some cool stuff. Actually, how do we revive our characters? <laughs> I don't actually know. Party. We're all dead. Healing. Heal those serious status ailments untreatable while inside a labyrinth. Like death? Spells and uh, When healing a serious ailment is near impossible and you fail at healing, the adventurer can become permanently injured. That sucks. Healers in town have the best success rates. So that's a very old school thing. You have a chance to fail on healing. Revival from the Grave adds one year, and Revival from Ashen two years to the great, to the adventurer's life. Using Wiz Jewels to revive doesn't age adventurers. It's another part of the currency system. A lot of the success of this game, I think, is going to boil down to um, the, the balance of the game, and whether it's balanced more to make you spend money, like like to drive you to the point of frustration that you, you just want to spend money to progress, or you put the game down, kind of like Candy Crush, or... Um, a lot of successful free-to-play mobile games, and I don't know if this game is going to be free-to-play. It's going to be going to be weird if it's not. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So, master 100% success rate. We have to pay Wiz Jewels for that. Um, no cost. We still have an 80% success rate. No cost with aging. Let's do that. Sure. Murmur. He's feeling better. <laughs> okay. I don't know why you wouldn't just do the 80%. It's a good... I mean, it sucks if it doesn't happen. Okay, yeah, so he turned to Ash, but... Uh, so now we have to... 
get him back from Ash, so we'll get we'll lose two years instead of one. I don't know at what age they like stop doing well. Uh, sure, we'll pay the 500 gold. He's better. I think he would just always do the. Oh. Uh, I say that, but I think he would just always do the novice one first and see what happens. Unless it's not actually 80%. I hope it is. I don't know how much of a how much of a difference one year makes, but I don't know. If you guys delve like really deeply into this game, let me know what you think. Um, I don't know how random the dungeons are either, if they're actually designed or randomly generated. It might have said that in the tutorial, but I don't recall. It seems like a cool idea, though. My my overall first impression is that it seems like it could be cool, depending on the balance of everything, and how much you're really into this kind of the style of. It's it's more of a casual wizardry experience, but I there's definitely depth to it too. And hey, it's a new wizardry game. Like, how often do we get one of those? And in the West. Not very often. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what to buy here with only the names to go off of. And you have to like click every single item to figure out what the stats are. And I can't tell what I have equipped right now. So they could definitely make some UI improvements here. Uh, I really need to be... like. That's one of the number one things I look for in, equi in an equipment system in RPGs is the ability to compare on the same screen uh, between the equipment I have equipped and the equipment I'm looking to buy. And uh, stuff like Final Fantasy XIV and Pillars of Eternity and uh, Tyranny that I'm playing right now does a really good job at that and I really wish there was something like that here. You can buy storage, buy a bag. Oh, you can buy it and put it in the bag or the storage, I see. Uh, base attack is 4, base hit rate is 1. I don't know what the hit rate means. You can only buy these for certain classes. Again, I wish that was clearer on this screen. In a mobile game, you, there's def definitely not enough room for it, but being on PC, I, I re really am looking for tooltips to pop up here or something to tell me that, that, yes, this is a good item to buy for your character, or it's not, you should not waste your time. But instead we have to go into our party, edit party, all the way like through several menus here. Um, we can see what we have equipped. Yeah, another menu. We are already wearing that. So we have to, we can't even click the item, we have to click this little question mark, which could mean anything. Uh, your average longsword, its weight precludes certain classes from wielding one. It's kind of strange that <laughs> thieves can't use longswords, but whatever when ninjas can. Um, attack base 7. I only have two things equipped, but I'm guessing you can have like up to four or five. There's a lot of space here. So it's like I have to look at my stuff on this screen, go all the way back, close out of this, close out of this, go to the item screen, connect, buy items, and remember, oh yeah, I've got, so I've got a base attack of 7 on my longsword, and then I have to look through all of these items, <laughs> which are not especially well organized as far as I can tell. Uh, at least it's not immediately apparent how they're organized. Maybe, like, there's daggers here, swords here. But they're not in, like, alphabetical order. They're just in order by type. So you kind of have to remember where the type of items that you're looking for are. Hematite. Yeah, these materials are really what you want because they give you extra bonuses. But again, you have to get those with whiz jewels. Um... Capacity, all of this stuff. The store, I don't believe to to actually buy with jewels. I don't believe it's uh, available right now. Got an achievement. Became Ashen once. Oh, they do give you a lot of gold though for these starting achievements. That might change when the game actually releases. This might just be a beta thing, but that's nice. I do like like receiving a lot of these kind of rewards. Um, 
You can look at the spells. That's cool. And I, I do like that they kept the original spell names and a lot of the original wizardry flavor. Which is a sub zero temperature, massive error of the enemy. That doesn't really tell me much about the spell either. Hopefully, they'll add more information here. Because, as is, I have no idea what that means. Other than, I'm guessing the type of damage matters against certain enemies. I think that's the case. Training. You can even sell our characters to get gold, which is cool. See if if you have a lot of low-level characters that you don't want to bother with, you can just sell them and buy different stuff. You can sell this expert experience material, bronze. Don't know what this does. I'm guessing it gives us more XP though. Oh, so maybe you can take this into your party too, and it gives you more XP. Experience 500. That's interesting. So you can like. I'm guessing you can take out a spot in your party and use this instead and then you'll get more XP. It'll make it make playing a lot harder, but you'll get more experience. So that's kind of cool that you can replace one of these guys. And I, I do like the aesthetic of the, the little tokens on the squares. Huh, I wonder why I can't get into this. Again, because I earlier before the video I went into this and then I f fled and I was like, okay, I'm going to show you guys this and now I can't. So that may be a bug. Anyway, um, I think you guys have seen enough of this game, honestly, to, to know if you guys want to buy it or not. Uh, I would definitely look into the balance and what other people have said about it before you spend money on it. If it if it costs money, if it's free to play, then you know why not try it. Um, might depend on how much ca like actual cash you're willing to put into the Wiz Jewels. To get a good return on this stuff. But really, I mean, it, it just seems like a solid roguelike. Uh, it's nothing too special to write home about, but it is kind of unique in the roguelike space because you have a party of six characters instead of uh, just your one guy. And I can't even think of any other roguelikes uh, that are like this. So, I do like that aspect a lot. Um, well, except for the one that I played for you guys, now that I think about it. Um, and I'm blanking on the name. But, anyway, there's not a lot of these kind of games out there. So, yeah, if you do try it, let me know what you think. Uh, and I hope this video was informative. I'm just kind of getting back into the swing of recording, but this was a lot of fun to show you guys. And, uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys next time, whenever next time is. Uh, thanks. Bye.